Hello and welcome to the latest of my deep dive videos. This one into the Gemini full moon of the 19th of December at 4.35 a.m. at Universal Central Time, GMT, Greenwich in London. Now please see on the screen now for where this event is going to occur for you locally. Now you can see from the chart world that I'm sharing on the screen that we have an ascendant for this event based on Scorpio. But it also means we have a 10th house position in the sign of Virgo, which can be, if you like, the collective attitudes we have towards organisation, hygiene, health and fitness. But Mars, the planet which governs the sign of Scorpio, is in the first house of this Greenwich based chart and Mars in the first house particularly in the sign of Sagittarius is very much about going for it it's not about restriction and restraint so Mars square in the 10th house suggests what we're going to see over the next couple of weeks is some people finding it difficult to curtail their enthusiasm for the festivities totally understandably when maybe there's going to be, depending on where you are in the world, some uh, cautionary notes or information or guidance in terms of the way we interact. Now, if you're new to my channel, I would be honoured if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. As ever, I'm going to dive deep and investigate in forensic detail what this event means and the planetary influences that are key in it. For example, Jupiter is forging a gorgeous link with both the Sun in Sagittarius and also the Moon in Gemini. And then I will go through each of the 12 zodiac signs and you can watch these from the perspective of your Sun or your Ascendant to see what the next two weeks will hold. But if you would like to buy your 12 month forecast for year 2022 and you do so now, you can get 30% off plus your character analysis and please see the link beneath this video. If you order in the latter part of year 21, I'll give you the rest of that year free. If you order into January, I'll give you 12 months from the time of your order. But please stay with me uh, whilst I investigate this event. So you can see on the screen we have the chart wheel of the event and the Sun and the Moon are at 27 degrees in Sagittarius and Gemini respectively. Now Gemini energy is very quick-witted, it's governed by Mercury, it is about speed of thought and agility, it's a mutable sign of course as well as the Sun in Sagittarius. But it is logical because it's working through the prism of air. The sun, on the other hand, is working through the prism of fire, so much more passionate. So what the uh, Gemini full moon is asking us to think about is our ideas and how we express them, because everyday communication is ruled by Gemini. The sun, on the other hand, is the big picture, the higher ideals, philosophies, longer term travel, Gemini very much to do with short, quick journeys. But you can see in this particular event that they go across the axis of the Moon in the 8th house and the Sun, uh, as, as well as Mercury, ironically, in the 2nd house, even though it is now in the sign of Capricorn. So the 2nd 8th house axis is very much about resources. It can be about where we're most invested. It can be about passion. And it can also be about intimacy. So what we're asked to think about on the back of this full moon, I think, is our language, our love language, if you like, our thinking around shared resources or where we spend money needs to be modulated against our ideas or against the reality. So the axis of Mercury and uh, Sagittarius is very much how we think. But because of the detachment of the moon in Gemini, we're being asked not to be too detached from our emotions. But that's where the eighth house location of the moon can be very helpful because it helps us to get beneath the surface of things in a much more psychological way. Now, the other aspects to really look out for on this event is, as I've mentioned, the fact that the Mars position 
in Sagittarius is squaring with the 10th house Virgo, which, you know, could create some, some desire to do as we wish. Um, also, we're seeing that Jupiter, the planet of growth, is in the third house of this situation, in the friendly sign of humanity, Aquarius, linking very supportively to both the, the moon in a trine, 120, and a sextile with the sun, uh, 60 degrees, both very enabling links. So I think Jupiter is asking us to still feel and hope that good things are possible. The midpoint between the sun and the moon is actually in the sign of Pisces, and you can see that we do have Neptune relatively close to the midpoint, and they are in the fourth house. So feeling secure is going to be very important for us over this next two weeks. That's not a great surprise. It's a time of the year when we like to be with loved ones, family members, all those things represented by the fourth house. But you can also see that Mars is actually a very stable link with uh, Saturn in the third house. So if we're constructive in our approach, that's helpful. It's just that Saturn and Uranus are back into that right angle and that's going to peak exactly on Christmas Eve on the 24th. It's going to be the third exact time this year that they've come into a 90 degree square. And because Saturn's in the third house of the nervous system, how we think, and Uranus is in the sixth house of the body and creates that electric energy, that particular aspect could cause stress. So it is important that we narrow our focus and try to and try to order our attentions towards the things that are absolutely essential. In other words, not to spread ourselves too thin. The other notable aspect in this event, of course, is Venus conjunct with Pluto. And ironically, on this day, it does depend on where you are in the world, Venus goes into a retrograde, but you can see when this event occurs, uh, at Greenwich meantime, it hasn't quite gone into retrograde, but it is going into retrograde on the 19th. Here in the Southern Hemisphere, it goes into retrograde on the 18th. Now we have that combination between Venus and Pluto in the third house. So we've been asked to think about relationships, but also think about resources, because Venus isn't just about relating, it can be about fashion, aesthetics, presentation, through its rulership of Libra, but of course, it is about relationships as well. So I would say it's to think about the roots of our relationships, the structures of our relationships, because of the uh, Capricornian energy that's being manifested in this event. And we can see that even on the ascendant in Scorpio at 16 degrees, Saturn's not that far away. So I think in terms of our approach to relationships, money, uh, resources, security in general, this chart on the on the face of it with Jupiter being big and bold and encouraging, you know, we could feel that we really want to, to mix and mingle in so many different ways and Mars is saying, look, let's go for it, whatever, in the first house. But actually there's quite a few sort of threads to this event, which is just asking us to weigh up the impact of our actions. So being mindful of our ideas, on our resources, on our expenditure, and on the depth and intimacy of our relationships. Now, please stay with me for your sign-by-sign -sign, uh, forecast for the next two weeks. Now, for you, Aries, of course, this event occurs in your third house of everyday communications. If you are wanting to travel over the next two weeks, which obviously a lot of people will over the festive season, it, the fact that you have got Saturn and also Venus in your 10th house of this situation, it could be that it is going to be about work. Or are you going to have some in-depth conversations at the Christmas party with someone who has great wisdom or insights? Or even are you going to be attracted to someone? If there is a spark of attraction, Aries, it wouldn't be a surprise if it was with someone who was older or younger than you by some uh, distance, but also Jupiter is supporting this event and it's kind of saying to us all really that however it looks and wherever we are whatever the situation we find ourselves in jupiter is very restoring or it's 
uh, pushing us to try to think the best of situations, to try to find the chinks of light, or if your situation is working better, to celebrate the upside that you're enjoying at the moment because life can soon serve up some challenges. So it's very, very important that we do celebrate the good moments that come along too. Now Taurus, for you, this event is reinforcing that second eighth house dynamic and that's very much about um, about spending money but it can also be about your personal values. Are you going to encounter someone who is actually going to really encourage you at this time? I think it's possible with Jupiter right high in the sky. This could be actually very good for you. I think maybe a financial offer or something's going to develop in your situation which is exciting but with your ruler aligned alongside Pluto in your ninth house it may require you to change, shift, move physically, emotionally in terms of your life routines in order to seize the opportunity and if you're someone who is resistant to change Uranus will keep pressing you to make that change and Saturn could be also applying pressure in your professional or worldly situation if you want to just approach things as you have in the past. So I think there is quite a lot of celestial energy really suggesting that if you can embrace evolution and change in your situation it will be better for you. If you resist it, it could create some tension. Now Gemini for you, obviously this event occurs in your sign, therefore the sun is in your seventh house and all day long that's about relationships. So if you're in a relationship which really isn't working for you, um, I think it may be because you feel that the other person isn't as committed, hasn't got the same vested interest as you, isn't um, as dedicated or um, isn't as invested as you are because of the link between Venus and Pluto in your eighth house. But having Jupiter in your sister air sign of the ninth house suggests that there could be a connection to someone over the festivities that really makes your pulse race. So that could be very, very exciting and it could get quite steamy with Venus conjunct Pluto. So that's very, very exciting. Now, Cancer, for you the moon occurs in your 12th house, which is about the parts of life that we're not always so keen to embrace. But if you're someone who is more meditative, is interested in personal development, likes quiet and solitude at times, then this could be a full moon that you gain a lot from. And with Jupiter in the part of your horoscope, that's to do with finance, maybe things that you've been working on behind the scenes for a long time can now start to pay off for you. What's the impact of Saturn with Uranus? Well, Uranus is asking you to be really open-minded about the type of people and direction of travel that you're going in your life. If finance is stopping you going in that direction at the moment, that could create a little bit of frustration. But Jupiter's there just saying, look, keep just working with your inner voice. Keep imagining where the direction of travel you'd like to go. That manifestation will bring an outcome that you want eventually. And hopefully something is going to emerge for you over the next couple of weeks to really buoy you. Leo, this full moon is in your 11th house of, of the group, friendships, uh, sociability. So perfect, if you would like, for the, uh, for the uh, seasonal festivities. Whereas the sun's in the part of your horoscope to do with your individual needs. And of course, you've got Mars in this location as well. You could be feeling very, very alluring. And with Jupiter linking into them, your self-confidence and sex appeal can bring someone to your side. What's not to like? Well, I think a professional relationship may be a little bit testing at the moment. Perhaps your work isn't quite working out as you would like. There can be a need for you to be quite flexible in your approach to the type of work you do and maybe Saturn uh, is bringing out that part of you that would prefer to stick with what you know or maybe you're having to collaborate with people that you find difficult at work. But the play side of things looks very positive for the next couple of weeks. So that's something to behold. Virgo, your feelings are going to be very close to the surface. So 
going to be very difficult to try to conceal that. But if you're in a very good space, why not? Also, Venus and Pluto in your fifth house means that your romantic or uh, the side of your nature that wants to bring romance into your life uh, at a, a real great sense of intensity. And um, I think that the tenth, fourth house can be about balancing uh, our need to nurture home, emotion, security against our worldly interactions. Um, and perhaps the worldly interactions for you, because Uranus is in that ninth house, keeps uh, encouraging you to experiment and to be more individualistic and more adventurous in your approach. But Saturn brings out that part of your nature that would prefer to stick with the order that you currently have. So that could leave you feeling a bit conflicted. So generally speaking over the next couple of weeks, I think security is, is high up your agenda. But ironically and, and in a kind of paradoxical way, you could feel a bit restless even though that is what you're looking for. That peace and, and, and stability could be threatened by the fact that maybe some changes are in the works. Now Libra, for you, having the Sun and Mars in your third house can give you more desire to express an opinion. And But you do have Venus and Pluto in the fourth house and Venus is your ruler. You've been pushing hard over the last few years to assert your boundaries more and not everyone has listened. Maybe some people just, you know, however much you've expressed things in a sensitive and, and diplomatic way, the others you've encountered have seemed to have been really not very encouraging at all. So the energy of this chart is very much about communication. Uh, an open mind is important. You may find in a love relationship if someone's too clingy, um, there's a lack of spark, you're craving something that's more exciting, an intellectual connection. This is going to see you thinking a lot and perhaps even talking a lot to people that you're close to over the next couple of weeks. Um, Jupiter is in a glorious location for you. And I think finding the connections with people where you've got common interests or common ideals or common values, that commonality can be very reassuring. Um, perhaps someone's going to enter your life is going to have a very profound impact on you. It could be romantic, it could just be someone who has a great depth of knowledge or a, a way of being that actually is very reassuring to you. Scorpio, well, of course the sun occurs in the second house, so therefore the moon's in the eighth. The eighth house is about longer term finances and uh, Sagittarius energy is about the here and now. With your ruler Mars also in Sagittarius, this could make you more impulsive. But with Saturn providing, you know, a, a good sort of uh, moderating impact on Mars, you know, you, you could spend money in a very shrewd way, particularly on your home or family members. It just if there is a relationship in your world with Saturn back in that square with Uranus where you feel you have a lot of responsibility, no freedom, your voice doesn't get heard, that kind of situation can be quite challenging for you and you know and, and yet you're craving for the the investment and the closeness that's very important to Scorpio people could see you a bit conflicted about what to do if a relationship really isn't working there's going to be a big conversation about money at the moment I feel or if it isn't about money it could be that you know the intimate side of the relationship isn't sparking as you would like all you can do with Jupiter in the fourth house is to try to keep the lines of communication going if you're wanting this to work out. But at the moment, I think it could be closing in a bit if it doesn't feel it's working quite so well. Sagittarius, for you, well, being single-minded is very important at times because, you know, it's, it's very uh, essential to take people with us to, you know, not just be so in our own needs that we're not aware of others but at the same time you know with mars in your own sign along with the sun you are being given a lot of encouragement to keep with your ideas and jupiter your ruler is supporting this event so 
maybe you just need to have a heart to heart with someone if they do feel that you're too focused on what you're trying to achieve creatively or in your work and just explain to them your circumstances. However, if they have got a point that you haven't really been so conscious of how it's been for someone close to you, and now would be a good time to, to, to really attune to them and try to be a, a, a little more sensitive to whatever it is they're feeling. And they may not be saying how they feel. Maybe it's just a, a bit of a distance has crept in. If that's the case, just try to create the time to do that. But financially, I think Venus conjunct Pluto can be very good for you at this time. And Capricorn, well, of course, for you, the moon occurs in the sixth house of practicality. So that's organising all the details of Christmas, I would imagine. You know, moon, the home front, the family, you know, whether it's the amount of tables you have or the cuttery or getting in the, the right amount of provisions, all that kind of organisational stuff. The sun and Mars are in the part of your horoscope that's much more to do with the emotional and sentimental side of your situation and Mars can be tricky in that location so some emotions could come up from your past but Mars is balanced well by Saturn your ruler so that's good however I wouldn't be too uh, extravagant with your resources because Saturn is compromised by Uranus so Uranus can see you more impulsive with resources and Saturn's asking you to, you know, just moderate things a little bit. But having said that, Jupiter is in your second house, forging a gorgeous link to both the sun and the moon. So perhaps this can be a time when you just get a lot of uplift for making sure that everyone in your situation gets everything that you have to give them. But I think there could be some moments over the next couple of weeks where you may just want to have some peace and quiet maybe some gentle walks in nature, restore your energy a little bit if it is possible to have some time off. And that actually could be very healing for you. In a romantic context, if you are single, Venus conjoining with Pluto is very alluring. And Mars in the 12th house could be a clue that someone from your past could be on your mind or will they be in your cosmic sphere? Will they get in contact or you with them? It is possible. Now, Aquarius, for you, this uh, event uh, accentuates the fifth, the moon of your sister air sign of Gemini, and the 11th, the sun in uh, Sagittarius of sociability. So the fifth house is very warmth, affection, joys, can be romance. The 11th house is more about the collective, getting together with others. Mars is in that location. Mars is forging a terrific link with your ruler Saturn, your co-ruler. So maybe the friendships that you can really count upon are going to come up for you. But with Venus can join in with Pluto in your 12th house. Are you pining for someone? Is there someone who hasn't been in touch that you would like to be in touch? You know, is it an old friend, an old associate, old colleague, or even that old relationship that's on your mind? So there is a, a potential to have quite a lot of enjoyment on this particular event, I feel. But at the same time, I just feel that there is some sensitive strands threaded through as well. You know, with uh, Mercury, uh, Venus and Pluto all in your 12th house. Perhaps you're just going to embrace the more traditional uh, elements of Christmas, maybe looking out for those who are less fortunate in your community. So a community-based Christmas or a, a, business ba a Christmas based on uh, being joyous around any kind of social interaction that you can have can be very uplifting to you. But I, I feel that there could be some, uh, you know, some deeper... Uh, strands perhaps linked to uh, someone who's not there or who you would like to be there or would like to be in touch with. Now Pisces, this uh, event occurs in your fourth house of home, uh, emotion, family. The sun in the tenth along with Mars suggests that you could be working hard, thinking a lot about professional matters in the, in the run-up to the turn of the year. And it could be a case of who, as much as what you know, 
Saturn is locked into that very uh, tense right angle with Uranus. So all the ideas and, and energy that's going on, if you're a bit worn down by the, the demands of the last couple of years, you may be thinking, oh, I really, really need to put up, put my feet up at some point over Christmas and, and have some real rest. But I think the needs of others, whether it's socially or professionally, may still be to the fore. But I think part of you may want to quarry yourself away and have uh, a little bit of quiet time to just let all the emotions of the last year or so just filter down through you. It's been a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. All the best and happy Christmas and goodbye.